drip. Let's go, go, go. It's another K Town beat. YouTube, 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 it's your boy, Mr. Outliner, I'm back with the burst tape of the day, you know what I mean, we got the burst tape or not, the burst taper is different than normal tapers because to me, in my opinion, you keep the seat cup dark, you know what I mean, and you know, it, it's the way you make your guideline, like, the guideline is just like a burst fade, right? It's gonna go round in a circle. So when you're making your guideline for the burst taper, remember that it's like a circle, you know, like the shape of an ear, but in a smaller area for sure, right? So after you knock it down, I use the one and a half on top of his hair to get his hair to the length that I needed it to be. Now, remember what I was telling you, you want to make it in a circle. So I'm using just the corner of the blade to make that happen. Now, you see where we're going with this. You see how I'm crafting it. It's just a little circle. And I'm purposely, intentionally leaving the C cup dark. And I'm also right here, something that you rarely see me do is start lining him up so I can make sure that I stay within the area I need to be in order to keep the seat cup dark right and you know you can use this on any hair any this method like lining them up ahead of time you can use this on any haircut if if it helps you stay where you need to be or achieve the look that you're trying to achieve right so on this side i did the same thing i just made like a little circle you know inside where the temple is right so you can call it burst taper right along the temple somebody might say oh it's just a temple taper i don't know man you know this stuff gets confusing to me after a while but you know to again to me this is a burst taper right so once you get both sides done and know where you want to set your guidelines up then you can come back and start the fading process so the first thing you want to do is take your clipper whichever clipper you use and use no guard but you want to open it all the way up and you just want to work that first guideline that you made you kind of want to take it away it's going to create an extra guideline but remember you you make a line and take a line away until everything is actually blend it all the way in and then after that you come back with your one guard open and then you work on the next guideline now here when you're using the one guard open here you're not trying to create an extra guideline so you want to be as gentle as possible so that means work the corner of your blade more in order to not make a hard guideline up on the next level if you see what I'm doing, I'm using the corner of the blade, right? So use the corner of the blade to attack the rest of the guideline that was made after you went open, all the way open with no guard, right? So we're using the corner of the blade. Then I also use the same one guard here to knock some more bulk down to smooth it out so I can get the transition that I'm looking for. Now, right here, I got a one and a half. Is it necessary to use a one and a half right here? Maybe, maybe not. Just depends on you and how you work your guards or in, you know, however you fade. Me personally, I probably could have just went a little clip over comb right here and everything would have been good. But uh, I chose to use a one and a half right there for whatever reason. Maybe I was thinking, hey, I'm gonna tell them about this or that. But anyway, so, after you use the one and a half, you come back with the one, then you work your way down to no guard. You know the system. So remember, you know, to use your system, always use the same system going forward and in reverse, 
right? So four, we came no guard, one guard, one and a half. Reverse, we came one and a half, one, no guard. All the way back down to the trimmer, right? So you go forward to reverse. That's how, I, that's my process. Now, you, it's other process that you can use, other steps that you can use to achieve these same looks, but this is what I do because it's easy, it's quick, it's efficient, right? So for me, I don't want to spend all day, you know, cutting one head and, you know, typically I like to try to do two haircuts in an hour if possible. It's not always possible, but if possible, I want to do two haircuts an hour, right? So, and I did end up using a little clip over comb right here. That's what I was telling you. If you really want to like detail and customize the look, you can use clip over comb to help you get there, right? And as you can see, this is why I call it the burst tape. You see it's going up into the fade, the way that the, the burst where it happens at. The burst is just right there in the temple where we made it all that. And the rest is just, it's going dark, but it's fading, right? So, um, right here, I'm just cleaning them up more, using clip overcome, just making sure that everything is faded the way that I would like for it to be faded, right? And before I go to the other side, I kind of just want to, I want to prep his beard because it's dark right now. And, I, you know, I just want to see how everything is coming together. So here I'm just doing light work, light tap. You know, I come back and make it real sharp and detailed a little later. But right now, like I said, I just want to gauge on how everything is coming together. You know, you can do this at the end. You can do it right now. You can do it in the beginning, whatever. It's, it's no real steps to, you know, when you should start on the beard, lining it up, or anything like that. It's no real process to that. You do it however you feel. And for video purposes, I did it this way. So this is one side. This is how you achieve the look on this side. I'll flip it around to the other side, and I'll speed it up a little bit. But I want you to take time and just watch the process. I use the exact same steps on the other side that I did on this side. Also, you can go right in and, you know, start making your line up in the front for the edge of, you know, the vertical bar is here too if you just want to see how that would look. Also, it saves you time. Now, when you come back to this side, like I said, I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but watch the steps that I do right here. Then after that, you want to come back and you want to knock down 
the hair in the front you want to knock down where it's cur where you make it smooth it's kind of a little curly from the wave pattern but you want to make it smooth as possible to prep the line up for the edge up right so after that you want to use your outline of mr outline of detail and mist like i use if you want to get a crisp sharp look right even crispier so you see the right here you know i have it in the description where you can go buy the product right and i show you firsthand what this product does but uh, i spray it on early because i want it to dry after it dries then it creates um, a dry space for you to cut to get the crispy look right and the reason why i like mine over others and somebody be like well why should i buy yours you know what i'm saying because mine won't clog your clippers that's the type of product I wanted to create where it doesn't clog your clippers and, and make it, you know, hard to cut and, you know, wear your blade down. So it's it's thick enough, but not too thick, right? But it gives you a sharp, crispy finish. You can see it right here already. No enhancements on it right now, but you see how sharp that is. And once I turn them to the side, you'll be able to see it even better. But you want to spray it on, let it dry a little bit, and then you can go from there to get your crispy lineup. As you can see from the side, you see how 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 crispy the line is, and all you have to do is barely tap it at this point. It's not a lot that you have to do. You just have to learn how to work your clippers, right? Just learn how to work them. So, um, yeah, you know, take your time with the lineup. You create sharp lines along with an agent to help you get to that point, right? And this is the look that you want, you know, and you see right there where I'm at now, uh, he was pushed back just a little bit, but we brought him back. You know, you don't have to push a line back in order to make it sharp. It's still sharp. And then after that, you can always put a little enhancement on it to make it pop. And, you know, when you're using enhancements, you're using it for spots like this. This is why you use enhancements. You see that? Boom. Everything is full now. Like that little spot that wasn't full is full now. And I might just hit it just a little bit in the front just because I want everything to look uniform, right? I want everything to match his beard. It could, I use his natural line, but I want it to be darker along the edges. So with that being said, I used a little hair fiber there. Now you can see like everything is matching and I did the line up prior too. So you don't have to guess kind of like where the line goes or make a line that's really not there. You spraying the actual hair fiber on the line that you actually made because the hair fiber is temporary. So once the hair fiber wears off, you still want your client to see his lineup. It might not be as, you know, potent as it was when you first used the hair fiber, but it'll still be sharp. So that's the reason why you do the lineup first, and then you come back and use the enhancements. And here you just repeating the, the exact same thing that you did on one side to the other side. Everything is about repetition on haircuts, repeating the same thing from one side to the other on, all the way around the head, right? So like I tell you all the time, it's your approach, your system, and your execution. So you always just want to look at the haircut, how you're going to approach it, to use the system that you have in place, and after you use the system to execute those first two things to make it all come together so hey if you follow those three steps those three guides the lines that i'm telling you about you'll be successful with any attempt on any haircut that you try to use to to you know do it on whatever type of haircut you're trying to do right and sometimes people inbox me and they let me know hey man uh, you know i've been watching your videos and i used your steps it, it kind of didn't come out the exact same way that you did 
a lot of times it's just minor things like you know maybe how you started your guideline maybe you didn't start your guideline the same way i did or something like that but if you inbox me i'll definitely look at your work and tell you if i feel like hey well you could have did this or that i give you honest opinion i mean if i say it's good it's good you know some stuff is is just trial and error you know you can't be too hard on yourself but um it take a lot to become you know a master barber that way to where you can do every haircut and make it look super nice super sharp all the time right so now i use the enhancements on this side because i used it on the other side and now everything looks uniform I, you know enhancements have definitely made haircutting a whole nother part of the game you know what i'm saying it allows us to even raise our prices to get paid more, right? And so like I told you, the detail in this is to be applied after you create the line and also the detail in this is gonna hold the hair fiber in place. So it works two ways. It, you know, it creates a dry canvas so you can get a short crispy line and it also holds the hair fiber in place. Now the rest of this is just fine tuning and detailing making sure you're getting everything super sharp, super crisp. Now I'm, I'm, I'm in my zone right now because I'm trying to like make everything pop and show you how everything go. You can tell how dry the canvas is by looking at his scalp, you know, looking at his skin when I'm using my trimmer on his lineup. It, it has that ashy look. And I'll move my shoulder here in a minute. I didn't know I was blocking the camera but it has that ashy look you see it you see it right here right so that's how dry it is and that's how come you're able to get a crispy clean look right this is why they call me mr outliner because of this you know because i can give you that you know what i'm saying he kind of got the, lo the the logo, my logo face. You know what I mean? But he got the bald head though. But anyway, so um, yeah, so this is how you take your game to the next level with hair fibers and you know using the agent in order to create this look. You want to get paid more? You want to have better looking Instagram pictures? Then hey, this is the product for you. You know what I mean? So and and I believe in it and I use it every day. So you see i show you on the videos exactly what i'm doing like i'm not editing parts out like i'm doing something different than coming back showing you a finished product like no i'm showing you the step step by step so you know i want you to be able to perform this yourself again on this side we end up doing the same thing i sped it up just a little bit but you can actually see everything that i'm doing so on this side we're doing the same thing we're just making sure everything is popping everything is neat you see the crispiness right here you see how we get down you see how we get busy you know what i mean we get in you feel what i'm saying so anyway um yeah so like i said it's just repetition you can get there uh, just take your time with it and you'll get the look that you're trying to get. After that, you can use your Mr. Outliner 360 Wave Pomade Molding Paste I got right here. It it uses, it's a double agent also. All my products are mainly like double agents, right? So with the 360 Wave Pomade, of course, it's going to make your waves pop. Of course, the other part that it does, it moisturizes your hair. The reason why I like my Wave Pomade over other ones is because mine, again, is not too thick. So, you know, and it's going to leave it very moisturized and it smells really good, right? So, you know, the problem with some of these grease, some of the grease and some of the pomade is the fact that it's just too thick. And, you know, it makes a person have dandruff or clogs their pores where 
the pores can't breathe. You see how the, the, the mold and paste is moisturizing his hair. Look at his hair. Look how clean that look. You know what I'm saying? Look how it, it give it a look a light shine. You know, so those things are important, right? When, when you're looking for a pomade. But anyway, that's the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You know how we do it. Until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. Ow, ow.